absolutely true. Well, you know, you let's know? get even deeper than that. I mean, if you want to get into string theory and quantum physics, then everything is both true and not true simultaneously, yeah, yeah. and uh, nothing exists. Is the cat is alive and dead at the same time? Yeah, uh, Schrodinger's cat, yeah, paradox. Yeah. I used to read that. So, so believe it or not, I wanted to be, we were talking before uh, the sound didn't work on what you, if you always wanted to be a lawyer and things. So, and I don't know that I've told people this, but I wanted to be an astrophysicist growing up. That was my goal. I want like to, Sheldon I, being big, I read, big Bang Theory? Yeah, like, I read Stephen Hawking. I read uh, everything Einstein did. I read whatever I could get my hands on. I loved the theoretical physics stuff. The problem I found is as I got a little older, I just did not have the aptitude for math. Right. Just couldn't do the math. And so I realized in high school that maybe astrophysics was not going to be the route that I get to, I'd get to go. I, I spent a little time delving into that subject, but uh, not for the same reason. It was actually because mm -hmm. we had gotten into an argument with my college roommates about gravity. Mm -hmm. Was it a theory or was it a law? And uh, I was kind of getting my butt kicked because I was a political science major. And uh -huh. that's, that was the wrong science. Yeah. So I, well, just, I think it's a law, right? It's been tested. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of you know where we Brian came. is. Did you know Brian's a physicist? Uh, the you know, other Brian, I did not. But yeah, I his, became an amateur quantum physicist in order to populate the argument. We should, get, we should get Brian in on that. He knows all about it. He he was a his undergrad is in physics. Oh, good. He's, then he can go over our heads in about twelve seconds. Oh yeah, no, no, man, you get him going down a rabbit hole. Uh, he can definitely go. But yeah, I read. I was all into all that stuff. Plus, it's just kind of cool. It is the whole string theory and multi dimensions and I you mean, know wormholes and black holes and the whole deal. Anytime your Marvel movie can teach you a little something about practical physics. Mm -hmm. I mean, two birds, one stone. You're really I did listen. Right. So uh, a lot of times when I'm driving, I listen to podcasts, and I listen to, um, uh, oh, I, you know what? I can. I was just listening to it today. I can. I was going to say, what are is. what are the podcasters' podcast recommendations? Yeah, well, there's really two main ones that I listen to. I listen to Joe Rogan, and I listen to Lex Friedman. That was Lex the one that Friedman. I was trying to think of. So Lex Friedman is a AI. I think he's really like an engineer, but he really he's real oh. smart on all kinds of stuff. So like he knows. He, he talks about, uh, you know, not just artificial intelligence, but space travel and if there were aliens and then philosophical stuff. And he's he was born, I don't want to butcher it, uh, it's a Slavic nation. I'm not sure it was Russia. It might have been the Ukraine, but he was born around there. So he's fluent in he's Russian. From, from the East. Correct. And uh, But he's an American. And so he has a really interesting perspective on just everything. Yeah. Uh, he's also a jiu-jitsu black belt. He trains in jiu-jitsu, so I can relate to him. Uh, we won't hold that against him. But but anyway, Lex Friedman's great, and he was interviewing Elon Musk. He's done it like three times, and they were talking today about space travel. And he was talking about the practicality of what Elon Musk believed on if we would ever get like warp, you know, warp drive or you could warp space and these kind of things. Right. And he was like, well... Right now, that's just not even in the wheelhouse of possibilities under physics. And so what he's focusing on is trying to get a reusable rocket that's cost-effective, that per ton is something that we can afford. Baby steps. Yeah, so you know, he didn't really even address the issue because it's, like, irrelevant to him. It, it, I mean, it right is because the whole faster-than-light travel thing, what blew my mind recently is it dawned on me is that if you're 60,000 light years away on a planet and you point a telescope at Earth, you're going to see dinosaurs. Yeah. Because the images you see are the light that's been traveling for the last 60,000 years. Yeah. So once it dawned on me that that's how travel works in space. Well, they might not see dinosaurs, though, because they're 65 60 million years. Million. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes. you would Some, see, uh, they would see mammoths and yeah. saber-toothed tigers and stuff. Some right? hunter-gatherers, perhaps. Yeah, they'd see some naked dudes hanging out. <laughs> Maybe a loincloth if we're uh, feeling bashful. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you're right. It's looking back in time. Yeah, it's yeah. almost a way to time travel. So, Which uh, uh, was the Ender's Game, where they actually wrote in the time travel paradox at the end of the book. Ender's Game. I might have read that one. Did you ever see or read Logan's Run? Logan's Run. It's where they were, uh, when they hit like 25, they get killed. They have a jewel that changes colors. It's yes, a, I, I believe I think it was an early 70s sci-fi movie. I and then they sort of redid it in the the nineties. Uh, I think I watched the seventies version with my old man at some point. Yeah, that sounds. Well, it's, it's another interesting. There's a whole lot of sci-fi stuff out there. I tell you what, I read. Uh, uh, what was the name of that one? It was a. Uh, it was either H.G. Wells or Jules Verne novel that's not well known, but it was about uh, this vehicle they'd created. This is, of course, pre-cars or anything, This is definitely a right? Jules Verne, then. Yeah, and it, was, it traveled like 60 miles an hour, 
And in their description of this vehicle, the, the, you know, I, I find it very interesting when you read or can see how people thought or analyzed their world at and the time. And got it right. Well, sometimes got it right, but sometimes more like why they thought this was a dragon or why they, right. you know, because their perception is based on their reality right then. Once anyway, you have an understanding. So they see this vehicle that does like 60 miles an hour and they think they it's like a so so fast that six, they can't even see it. Like it's like it's blur right. this vehicle, from their perception because nothing did 60 miles an because hour. Because you topped out at 18 when you had the good horse at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were, the thought process of this guy in a vehicle that would go that fast was just phenomenal it's just interesting the way they thought about stuff back which then. i think they worked that into the league of extraordinary gentlemen they may have i haven't seen that movie in a long time well it's probably a josh favorite it's his they, job uh, i love i love i mean they they, they took jules verne's works and they mm -hmm. just threw them all in that movie yeah he's got some really good stuff too he i does. mean i really liked it and it's even influenced people today a H lot of modern sci-fi writers were way if, ahead of their time if i can <laughs> recommend one the mysterious island by jules verne is um <clears throat> It's connected to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, vaguely, mm. but it's its own standalone novel, and I think maybe better than anything else he wrote. Yeah, I haven't read that one. It's uh, it's your Robinson Crusoe mixed with um, Jules Verne. Yeah. Yeah, I read a whole lot of that the, the that stuff. I read uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Time Journey Machine to the Center of the great. Earth, oh. the Time Machine. Um, War of the Worlds. Yeah, War of the Worlds. There's, oh, a, there's a whole bunch. Through Dorian there. Gray. Journey. What was it? Uh, uh, what was the one around the world in 80 days? Uh, uh, Journey, Journey around, around the world. In yeah, 80 whatever days. it was. I read that one. Oh, with Jackie Chan. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I saw the movie. Jackie Chan. So I loved it.